Good morning, everyone. And what a great way to start our service this morning. Thank you very much. Um, I'm here to make an announcement because undoubtedly we are all very much aware of the temperatures outside um, the past couple of days and the temperatures as are going to continue to be in the 90s for the next couple of days. If you look on the inside of your bulletin, you will see our new purpose statement and you will see that one of the things that our purpose statement says is that we are going to have a focus on meeting the needs of the vulnerable of our community. With this heat, it can present some real medical dangers from people, for people of all ages. It doesn't just have to be older people. It can be children, it can be infants, it can be teens. It can be because they've been out playing in a, in a sporting event. It can be because their air conditioning stopped working. It could be because they don't even have air conditioning. So what I'm asking you to do is to make the community aware that we are going to have our church open this evening. Um, I'm not quite sure how long. The temperatures are supposed to come down to uh, the 70s around 11 o'clock tonight. But the church is open, so we're going to keep our building open a little bit longer today so that if there are people who need to get out of, a, of an oppressive heat situation, we want them to come here to St. John's because this is some way that we can help those in need. So please help us spread the word. And just as importantly, I do need your help to have somebody here during the day and it doesn't have to be one person. Obviously, we want to have several people, perhaps in shifts, that might be willing, instead of um, staying at home and watching a baseball game. We do have TVs here. You can always come and watch a baseball game here. But if you wouldn't mind coming here so that if somebody from the community does come, that they aren't here alone, and that we can greet them and let them know that we're welcoming to them and that we're here for them. So might there be anybody who has some time this afternoon or early evening? I can be here after 9 o'clock, but I'm not available before that. But is anybody else available? Our church is open anyhow, but I just think it would be so much nicer if we had people here to say hello. Jean, thank you. Anybody else willing to do that? Anybody back here? Agreed. And if the person's not comfortable coming here, be a good neighbor. Invite them to your house. So if you know of people, please either help them by inviting them to your house or let them know that they can come here to St. John's. Okay? And if anybody thinks about this during the service and you decide afterwards that yes, you can come and spend a couple of hours or so, please see me after the service. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. I just wanted to make a quick announcement that today is our second children's ministry Bible study. So if any kids here or if you know of any kids or grandkids who would like to join us, um, we'll be meeting in the conference room after this service to continue our study of Philippians and we'd love to have you join us. Thank you. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and one another. You may kneel as able. Eternal God, our creator, in you we live and move and have our being. Look upon us, your children, the work of your hands. Forgive us all our offenses, 
and cleanse us from proud thoughts and empty desires. By your grace, draw us near to you, our refuge and our strength. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us while we were sinners, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. Amen. Please rise. The peace of the Lord be with you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Lamentations, chapter 3. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him to the soul that seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it, to put one's mouth to the dust. There may yet be hope, to give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Now, as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this manner I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do <clears throat> excuse me, something, but even to desire to do something. Now, finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your presence abundance and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. 
She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, you see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The gospel of our Lord. Praise you may be seated. Good morning. So as many of you may know, um, Vacation Bible School just ended on Thursday. We have spent the last two weeks with just over a hundred children and youth learning about God and learning different Bible stories and participating in different activities. We had five days of traveling to different stations and learning the lessons and then on Thursday, our last day, we took all of our children and volunteers to Walnut Woods and Chestnut Knoll and shared the stories and lessons that we learned there, which is what we would like to share with you all now this morning. So the theme for this year's Vacation Bible School was Rolling River Rampage, and each day the children learned different lessons of how God is with them through their everyday lives. Our theme verse for this year came from Isaiah 43.2, which reads, When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Each day, the kids traveled to five different stations where they engaged the scripture reading in various ways. These stations included snack, crafts, science, Bible stories, and games. And we have some pictures up here. So here's some crafts. Science. They got to make slime and do lots of fun things like that. Bible stories. and games. They also spent time each day singing and dancing and learning songs that reinforced the lessons learned and the scriptures taught. Each day, the kids also learned a rapid reminder, which served as a way of remembering their Bible lesson for the day. These rapid reminders were the five different things that they should find on the river of life with Jesus every day. On day one, their rapid reminder was to find adventure on the river. Their Bible lesson for this day came from Matthew chapter four, which taught them about Jesus calling the disciples to a new adventure. They learned that the disciples were all everyday people who knew how to do ordinary things like go fishing. Jesus invited them to turn their ordinary lives into extraordinary ones by joining this adventure with him. The reminder to find adventure on the river reminds us that our lives become an extraordinary adventure when we follow Jesus. On day two, the rapid reminder was to find acceptance on the river. 
The Bible story was about two sisters, Mary and Martha, and came from Luke chapter 10. When Jesus came to visit, Martha was busy taking care of preparing the meal while Mary was sitting at Jesus' feet. Martha wanted Jesus to make Mary help her, but Jesus told Martha that Mary was making the right choice. He loved and accepted both of these women for who they were. The reminder to find acceptance on the river reminds us that Jesus also loves and accepts us for who we are and that we should share that love and acceptance with others. On day three, the rapid reminder was to find joy on the river. On this day, we learned the story of Zacchaeus from Luke chapter 19. Zacchaeus was a wee little man, as one of our songs taught us, and he was also a tax collector, which made him very unpopular among others. When Zacchaeus heard that Jesus was coming to his town, he climbed up a tree to try and see him. Jesus saw him and invited him to come down and be his friend, which brought Zacchaeus great joy. The reminder to find joy on the river reminds us that Jesus also sees us and wants to be our friend as well. On day four, the rapid reminder was to find rest on the river. The children learned this, the story of the Last Supper from Luke chapter 22. In their Bible story lesson this day, they learned the significance of communion and about how the Passover meal serves as a time for God's people to rest and remember all he has done for them. The reminder to find rest on the river reminds us that Jesus invites us to rest and remember his love for us when we take the Lord's Supper. And on day five, which was our last day, um, the rapid reminder was to find peace on the river. To find peace on the river. <laughs> the Bible story for this day came from Matthew 28, when Jesus sent the disciples to go into the world and share the good news of God's love with everyone. Jesus made a forever promise to the disciples, saying, I will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The reminder to find peace on the river reminds us that Jesus' promise is for all of us and brings us peace just as it brought the disciples peace. We were so happy for this time to dive deeper into God's word with these kids and learn such important lessons. The lessons at VBS Rolling River Rampage served as a reminder to all of us that no matter what, when we are passing through the waters, walking through the fires, or bracing raging storms, God is with us. May you all continue to find adventure, acceptance, joy, rest, and peace on the river with God. Thank you. Please rise. Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He is ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may kneel as able. Growing in faith and discipleship, we give thanks for God's merciful compassion as we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, send out your church to cross boundaries for the sake of your holy compassion. Use our words and our actions to bring peace and wholeness to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Bountiful God, all creation is a gift from you. Protect the earth from disaster and misuse. Free us from selfishness and help us to honor the bounty of nature, sharing our earthly home with one another and with future generations. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 
Hear our prayer. Liberating God, soften the hearts of rulers and governments. Strengthen the voices of those who cry out for freedom and opportunity for the overlooked, the oppressed, and abused. Teach your people to speak peace to all people and nations. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful God, give us faith and make us whole. Ease the anxiety of undiagnosed or chronic illness. Soothe the heartache of miscarriage or infertility. Look with compassion on all who cry to you for healing. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Mighty God, protect and bless all civil servants, local government officials, and members of the armed services who work for our safety and security. Help us to be thoughtful citizens and good neighbors in our community. Lord, in your mercy. Please verbally add your personal prayer requests for all those returning from Houston for our safe trip. Heavenly Father, remember the Donald Fry family this year, this week, um, and every day for going forward. We pray for Ethel Rasmuslowski. We pray for our youth returning from Houston. Immortal God, your mercies never end, and your faithfulness is everlasting. Inspire us by the faith of the saints to wait patiently for your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Summing up all our prayers, we join in the words our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. May God, our working in us, can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Grant you the gifts of faith and hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve. <laughs> 